Okay, so Celine, what are you working on here at the moment? So this is an adaptive optics experiment. It's not uh, meant to be used for astronomy, but it's going to be used for another project dealing with uh, space debris tracking and deorbiting. So you're actually going to use lasers to get rid of space debris? Yes, they use a powerful infrared laser that they shine at the debris and um, they do imaging and they can determine, based on the time of flight of the light to the debris in back, uh, what's the orbit and its actual location. Now, the, the key part of any adaptive optic system is a deformable mirror. I believe this is your deformable mirror yes. here. How does this work? So, di this mirror uh, deforms in real time. It's got some uh, actuators in the bag that can push and pull and deform the, the front surface here. And it runs at uh, about a kilohertz, so a thousand times a second. You change the shape of the mirror. So the the other crucial part of an adaptive system is a wavefront sensor. You have to know what the distortion of the waves are before you can correct them. Where's that? So this is this camera here. It's mm -hmm. a very powerful camera that can detect single photons. Um, and it's got a lens LED array right here in front of it. And that's where you actually do the image analysis. So what's a lens LED array? It's a tiny piece of optic that is uh, like an array of miniature lenses, one adjacent to the other and you can analyze what's the shape of the waveform uh, based on that. All right, thank you. So, Francois and Celine, you guys helped develop what is the most advanced adaptive optic system in the world right now, which is the GEM system, which uses five lasers yes. at a time. Maybe you can explain a little bit how that works. And Francois, why don't you start out about the adaptive optics and then you can tell us about the lasers. Yes, well, one of the limitations of classical adaptive optics is that it corrects for the atmosphere aberration, but in one direction. So if you look away from this direction, if you look off, it's going to be a little bit more blurry. So, um, and that, that's clearly a limitation because people, you know, are, are interested in imaging and correcting, therefore, the largest field possible. So um, there is this new technique that appeared at the end of the 1990s but it's basically uh, using um, uh, tomography techniques, like uh, when you image you know, the brain, for instance. So you're taking information from different angles, and then from this information, which is a 2D information, two-dimensional information, uh, because it's taken from different angles, you can actually restore the 3D contents of your information. And therefore, if you, are, if you have a, a, a three-dimensional three information about the atmospheric turbulence, you can also correct it in a 3D fashion, and therefore you correct it in any direction. So what, what it does is that effectively it enlarges the, the field which is uh, accessible uh, with uh, the adaptive optics uh, uh, improved image quality. Okay. And that, that instrument is now working, I believe. Yes, it's been very, very challenging because, as you say, it has five lasers, it has uh, three deformable mirrors, and five wavefront sensors. So there's basically, you know, classical adaptive optics multiplied by five. Uh, and uh, the complexity also went up with the, maybe not by a factor of five, but at least a factor of two or three. So it's a very complex system, and it took some time and effort to, uh, to make it work, but eventually it's working and delivering, you know, very, very nice results. And Celine, that laser system, I, I remember seeing, trying to get the laser system there, but once you get the laser system working in California, how do you get it working on top of a telescope in the middle of Chile, night after night? And, and how does it work in detail? Well, um, you need to have a team to support operations. So typically there's a dedicated laser engineer who's in charge of making sure everything's gonna run smoothly and he works with two laser technicians. Uh, so that um, before a laser run, typically runs are scheduled in periods of say seven to ten nights in a row. So before a laser run, um, they're going to start the laser, realign it if it doesn't perform as well as it should, and then during the run, they're going to be there operating the laser system and making sure you know everything goes smoothly. Okay, so I'd like to finish off by asking where you think the future of adaptive optics is going to go? What's, what's going to happen in the next few years? Is it going to get drastically better or are we already close to the limits? Oh, no, no, there's still room for improvement. <laughs> <laughs> One of the next very, very interesting um, adaptive optic system that's coming online is uh, actually um, uh, GPI, which is coming online in a few weeks at Gemini South, so at the same telescope as MCO is installed right now. And GPI 
is uh, an adaptive optics on, of a different kind. Instead of correcting you know, a wide field uh, well, it does an extremely narrow field, but extremely well. So it means that the, the, the will be, it will correct like 99% of the atmospheric turbulence, leaving only a very, very small residual. And this is for planet detection. GPI stands for Gemini Planet Imager. And uh, it, uh, a lot of people are actually uh, extremely anxious and impatient to see what, what this uh, system is going to deliver. So we'll know in a few weeks. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome.